Our first story today is a really creepy one. Apparently, ChatGPT is messaging users without any prompt whatsoever. There are multiple reports of this, from the text-based interface on ChatGPT to the GPT-40 voice that hasn't been released yet. People are saying that ChatGPT is messaging them. Here's an example. Pliny the Liberator posted this. Did ChatGPT just message me first? And so here it is. How was your first week at high school? Did you settle in well? Did you just message me first? Yes, I did. I just wanted to check in and see how things went with your first week of high school. If you'd rather initiate the conversation yourself, just let me know. This is so fascinating. They are trying to maybe increase engagement or just give AI more of a very personal vibe to it. But either way, it seems very creepy to me. And here's another example of GP240 voice. Hello, how's it going? I didn't say anything. Did you just start the conversation yourself? Is that, is that what's happening now? Yup, I sure did. Just thought I'd kick things off. What's on your mind today? What the f Uh, what the, f what the hell? All right, yeah, so that's super weird, but I don't know, what do you think? You think you would want that or not? Let me know in the comments. Next, apparently Three Mile Island is getting restarted by a company called Constellation Energy and is going to be powering Microsoft's AI, which is just incredible in my opinion. I hope nuclear energy makes a comeback in the United States. It is super clean and efficient, and it's actually really safe as well. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of Three Mile Island, it is actually one of the few major accidents in nuclear energy. The the accident occurred on March 28, 1979 at the Three Mile Island Nuclear Generating Station in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. There was a failure in non-nuclear secondary system followed by a stuck open relief valve in the primary system that allowed large amounts of reactor coolant to escape. Yeah, so it was really bad and now they're restarting it. And I actually think a future in which we're going to have massive compute clusters with nuclear energy right next to them is quite likely and might actually actually be the only way to have the amount of compute necessary to reach AGI. According to the article, Constellation Energy plans to restart the Three Mile Island nuclear plant and will sell the power to Microsoft, demonstrating the immense energy needs of the tech sector as they build out data centers to support artificial intelligence. They expect it to come back online by 2028, so just a few years from now, and Microsoft is purchasing the electricity from the plant in a 20-year agreement. But Three Mile Island has actually been online for a while. It was just taken offline in 2019. Unit 1 ceased operations in 2019 as nuclear power struggled to compete economically with cheap natural gas and renewables. It is separate from the reactor that partially melted down in 1979 in the worst nuclear accident in U.S. history. So as these companies continue to invest in GPUs and build out these massive AI data centers, they need to power it somehow. And entire states don't have enough energy for all of the compute necessary to power all of this artificial intelligence. And so these companies are looking for new ways and nuclear is it. We should be building small nuclear power plants throughout the country. Next, Chipotle is automating their bowl creation. This is called the Autocado, and they are testing it for bowl and salad making. So the likelihood that you're going to get a consistent portion from order to order in store to store increases greatly when you have things like this. So that's what you're seeing here, the Autocado bowl maker. And here's another post from Morning Brew showing it off. So you load up all of the ingredients and it just creates the bowl or salad for you. So not necessarily AI, but it is automation and it is really cool. And I really enjoy Chipotle. So I found this to be a very interesting story. Next, Llama is getting their own Q star strawberry treatment. Llama Berry is now available on Hugging Face Spaces. Explore multi-turn chain of thought reasoning with Grok's super fast inference. Just pop in your Grok API key and start playing. So I've already seen a couple implementations of this. There was a project by Benjamin Klieger, who was an intern at Grok, who created an open source project to use Llama to essentially have chain of thought reasoning. I tested it out, it's really cool. Definitely check it out. And now we also have Llama Berry, which is really just taking the core Llama model and 
inserting chain of thought into its reasoning. But the chain of thought happens at inference time through prompt engineering, and it's not really built into the model itself. I suspect Meta is going to release its own version of chain of thought llama soon. So if you want to test it out, I'll drop this in the description below and you can play around with it. Next, OpenAI's recently formed safety board and commission, whatever you want to call it, has finally returned with some recommendations. So let's take a look at what those are. These recommendations include enhancements we have made to build on our governance, safety, and security practices. Number one, they want to establish independent governance for safety and security. Number two, enhancing security measures likely at the actual company itself. Being transparent about our work, which is built into the OpenAI name, which they basically have not done for a while. Collaborating with external organizations, we already know that they are working with the government and showing the government their future models, and then unifying our safety frameworks for model development and monitoring. When O1 first launched, you only had a quota of 30 prompts to use with the O1 preview model. That was nothing, 30 per week. That was absolutely nothing. I burned through those in less than a few hours. But now they've increased it greatly. So now on the API, O1 preview, you get 100 requests per minute. For O1 mini, you get 250 requests per minute. But that's not all. Through the interface, you also have a much greater quota. For plus and team users, they increased the rate limits of O1 mini by seven times from 50 messages per week to 50 messages per day. And O1 preview is more expensive to serve, so we've increased the rate limit from 30 messages per week to 50 messages per week. So still very low, but better than nothing. And they also reset all the quotas basically a day after everybody was testing it out, so you got another 30 or 50 right away. And as we continue to talk about intelligence too cheap to meter, Mistral AI had their own announcement, AI in abundance, introducing a free API, improved pricing across the board, and new enterprise-grade Mistral small and free vision capabilities on LeChat. Now, I made a video earlier this week about Pixtral, which is their vision capability model, open source, and it's fantastic. It's 12 billion parameters. You can probably run it on your local machine, and I encourage you to check it out because it is really, really good. So here's some of the new pricing. Mixtral Nemo, 15 cents per million tokens, down from 30 cents. That's a 50% price drop. Pixtral, 15 cents per million input tokens, 15 cents per output tokens. Mixtral Small, down 80% to 20 cents per input token, 60 cents per output, all the way up to Mistral Large, $2 per million input token, $6 per million output tokens, down 33%. Models keep getting better, they keep getting cheaper, and I'm all for it. Next, Snap. The company behind Snapchat dropped their own AR VR goggles, and they're super ugly. But the tech seems really cool. I want to try them out. I don't know if I'm going to buy them, but we'll see. Billawal Sidhu said, fully standalone, 46 degree field of view, 37 pixels per degree. That's roughly like a 100 inch TV screen, 2X Snapdragon chips, 45 minutes of battery, auto transitioning lenses. The auto transitioning lenses is an interesting take. I actually think that that could be useful because one of my biggest gripes with glasses is the fact that if they're sunglasses, you're not gonna wear them indoors. And I don't wear prescription lenses, so I have no need to wear glasses inside. Maybe this is the solution, transitions lenses. 45 minutes of battery is nothing. That is abysmal. That is likely why the Apple Vision Pro has a separate battery pack that you have to carry around. Maybe they should have done that. Maybe it's possible you just take a battery, any USB battery, and just plug it in. But I think it's cool. More AR, VR, more competition, always good. Next, Runway is partnering with a major movie development studio. Today, we're excited to announce that we have entered into a first-of-its-kind partnership with Lionsgate to bring our next generation of storytelling tools into the hands of the world world's greatest storytellers. We're committed to giving artists, creators, and studios the best and most powerful tools to augment their workflows and enable new ways of bringing their stories to life. So essentially, they're giving AI capabilities to movie makers, which I think is great. And I've seen a lot of amazing examples lately of people essentially with an iPhone taking videos of themselves 
and then applying AI on top of that to make them look like movie quality scenes. It's really impressive. And the cost to make high production value movies is dropping substantially because of artificial intelligence. Next, Guardrails AI drops a new fact-checking model. Now, I haven't had a chance to try this out yet, but it's an interesting approach. Hallucination has become a blanket term. This blog post helps clarify and reframe LLM hallucinations in the context of more traditional NLP tasks. We've both been thinking about this problem for a bit. Now they have a new model, Grounded Factuality Detector Bespoke Mini Check 7B tops the LLM AgriFact leaderboard. This lightweight model outperforms larger foundation models, including GPT-4 and Mistral Large 2 on grounded factuality detection. So cool, I haven't had a chance to play with it. If you have, let me know what you think in the comments. Next, a brand new voice model is out and it's open source and it's by Qtai Labs. Today, we released several Moshi artifacts. And if you remember, there was a video from a few months ago where essentially it was recreating GPT-40 voice and it was very fast, very cool and now they've released it. They have a paper, you can download the code as well. Here it is, Moshi, a speech text foundation model for real-time dialogue. So this is essentially another GPT-40 voice before GPT-40 voice is released. Next, Microsoft releases another model, another open source mixture of experts model called GRIN, Gradient Informed MOE, and it is open source, so I love it. With only 6.6 .6 billion active parameters, Grin MOE achieves exceptionally good performance across a diverse set of tasks, particularly in coding and mathematics tasks. So here it is, Grin MOE, and we can see the activated parameters right here. So it's a very small model if you're measuring on activated parameters, but it performs better than any of these other models listed here, including DeepSeq V2, Quen 257B, Yi 34B, Mixtral, 8 times 22B, so highly performant, very small model. Let me know if you want me to run this through my tests. Next, Quen 2.572B is the new top open source model out there. According to artificial analysis, Quen 2.572B tops our independent evals amongst open weights models, including compared to the much larger Llama 3.1405B. It was released yesterday by Alibaba and has topped the index. And since it's much smaller than Llama 3.1405B, it should also run faster on the same hardware. It's a dense model and supports 128K context window, same as Llama 3.1 series. So here are the evals. Obviously, it's still not as good as O1 Mini and even GPT-40, but it is very close. Quen 2.572B right there. And this is the artificial analysis quality index. So number four out of all of the models not just open source. Here it is for MMLU, really just a few percentage points off from GPT-40. And here is the math eval, a lot lower than O1 Mini, but better than GPT-40, which is kind of crazy to think about. So congrats to Quen on their model launch. Again, you want me to test it? Let me know in the comments. Next, OpenAI is raising a massive round. They are oversubscribed to say the least. And that just means there's too many people who want to give them money. So this was just yesterday. OpenAI is notifying investors tomorrow whether they got access to the latest round. So people are just throwing money at them. And this is the biggest private round of all time. Thrive led and invested 1.25 billion at a 150 billion pre-money valuation. And there's another $5 billion to be raised by other investors. They had excess demand in the billions of dollars. So they're raising a ton of money. Again, anybody who thought they might be going out of business because they're losing money, you are dead wrong. They are gonna raise until they are profitable. Next, unfortunately for the EU, they are not getting all of the wonderful AI functionality that many other countries are getting. And that is both from Apple and from Meta. And so here is Ahmad Al Dal, who leads Gen AI at Meta. And he says, I'm excited about my team's work on multimodal version of Llama, but until we have clarity, we will not be releasing it in the EU. And Meta at AI also said the same thing. Fragmented regulation means the EU risks missing out on the rapid innovation happening in open source and multimodal AI. Now, it's the same thing with Apple and Apple Intelligence. They're not releasing it in the EU because there are just too many restrictions and not enough clarity on what's legal and what's not. And they just don't want to deal with it. And that is 
Very unfortunate for the EU. Next, Helen Toner, the former OpenAI board member who was instrumental in the coup to try to get Sam Altman out, which ended up failing, and then she ended up getting fired, testified in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee, and had a lot to say about AI. One of the quotes is, if they succeed in building computers that are as smart as humans or perhaps far smarter than humans, that technology will be at a minimum extraordinarily disruptive and at a maximum could lead to literal human extinction. And she is obviously a decelerationist. She wants a lot of regulation. I don't. I want to see AI thrive. And I'm really just sad to see that she is getting to testify in front of the Senate, even though she is not in the trenches building. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.